In this short video, we'll explore one of the fantastic workbooks within the Sentinel solution for SAP applications. Today, we're diving deep into the SAP Audit Controls workbook, which can be very useful in assessing the security controls and compliance of your SAP environment. Before we dive into the workbook itself, let's begin by finding the template through our Content Hub. To get started, navigate to the Content Hub plate and let's search for the SAP solution. From here, you can effortlessly deploy the template for the workbook. After deployment, we can start exploring the contents of this workbook. As mentioned, this workbook is a valuable resource for evaluating the compliance of your SAP environment with your selected control framework, whether it's SOX, NIST, or a custom framework of your preference. But let's first explore the different parameters which you can utilize to customize your data selection. Start by choosing the workspace where you want to assess the compliance of your SAP systems. Next, set a time frame for your data. Consider the specific SAP system roles you want to include in your assessment, such as production. Then we can choose the system usage, for example, SAP ERP. And then we choose which SAP system IDs to include in our analysis. Then we can filter the control framework, control families, control IDs. Select these criteria based on the control framework you want to use for evaluating your coverage and the specific controls you wish to use to filter the workbook data. Now that we've set our parameters, let's dive into the workbook itself. The workbook is organized into three sections. We have Configure, Monitor, and Report. In the Configure section, you'll find a table called Templates Ready to Use. This table lists analytic rule templates that haven't been activated yet. To achieve compliance, you may need to create these rules. Now, let's take a closer look at some of these rules. For example, the SAP Brute Force Rule has a medium fidelity rating in the recommended configuration column. This column indicates the rule's purpose, whether it's meant to create incidents for investigation or generate alerts to support other investigations. In this case, it's an incident rule with medium fidelity. On the other hand, if we examine the SAP execution of sensitive function module, You'll notice it's classified as an alert rule with low fidelity. This is due to lower correlation in this rule, which results in reduced confidence in the rule. This rule is a more straightforward rule that looks for a single event without further investigation. That's why we recommend using this rule only to create alerts, not incidents. When you start your SAP Sentinel journey, it's advisable to deploy rules with higher fidelity ratings first. When you choose a rule, you can click on Activate Rule in the description pane to create an analytic rule from the template. This sets up the rule with the recommended configurations. After you've been running the solution for a few days, you can review the Select a Rule to Configure table. Here you'll find a list of the activated analytic rules. For each activated rule, you'll see counts and graphical representations of incidents and alerts generated by that rule. Additionally, the Incident column indicates whether the rule's incident creation setting is enabled. And another column specifies the rule source, whether it's from the gallery or custom. 
When you select the rule, a detailed pane appears, providing information about the rule, including its recommendation. The next section of this pane displays the security controls and control families associated with the rule in various frameworks. For the SOX and NIST frameworks, you have the flexibility to customize the control assignment by selecting different controls or control families from the respective drop-down menus. And if you're working with custom frameworks, you can input your own controls and control families in the My Org text boxes. Additionally, from this panel, you can click on Rule Overview to access the details panel. Now, let's explore the Monitor tab. In this section, you'll find a graphical representation of instances in your environment that align with the filters at the top of the workbook. The incidents trend graph illustrates how the number of incidents change over time. You have the flexibility to customize the grouping of incidents by using the drop-down menu. The incidents hive graph provides a dual grouping approach. By default, for the SOX framework, incidents are grouped first by SOX control family, resembling a honeycomb array of cells, and then by system ID. You can modify the grouping criteria using the drill down and then by selectors. And now let's explore the report tab. At this stage, you've completed the initial hard work, enabling and configuring the rules as needed. It's the moment to sit down with your internal auditor and present, this is what happened this quarter. And in this view, you can also show all the incidents that match the specific filters you've applied at the top of the workbook. And a nice bonus is that you can easily access this information by downloading it as an Excel sheet.